in Genesis chapter 47 and verse 15. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money failed. So morning failing is not new. In case Naira is failing, it's not new. In case the currency of your country is failing, it's not new. It has happened, it will still happen, and it will continue to happen. It's not a new thing. But in the midst of that, something happened. In verse 27 of that same chapter, a set of people dwell in the same place where money failed. And their case was different. And Israel dwelled in the land of Egypt. They were not outside Egypt. You may be in Nigeria, you may be in Ghana, you may be in Cameroon, you may be in Benin Republic, you may be anywhere in the world. He said, and the children of Israel dwelled in the land of Egypt, in the country of Goshen. And they had what? Possessions. When money was failing was when they had possessions. They are in a and multiply city. Has God changed? Has God changed? Israel happens to be his own people. Are you a child of God? Leave those hands to heaven. If you believe the scriptures, I decree in the midst of failure of money, you will have more than enough. If you believe this word, and you stand on the integrity of this word, and you believe that even the prayers you offer that you believe them. I decree in the midst of money failing, you will never suffer it. This shall be to you your best season in the name of Jesus. Failure of money in the nation where you are will not affect you. I decree right now, be favored in the name of Jesus. You will never be a victim. You will never be affected. It is this time you will have more than enough. If you believe the integrity of God's word, let your amen confirm it. In the name of Jesus. To as many as believe, I declare it is done in your life. And so shall it be. In the precious name of Jesus. Say, so I, I believe it. In the name of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 9 and verse 35. The Bible declares, And Jesus went above all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues, I'm preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom is a gospel of healing and, and healing every sickness, every disease among the people. The gospel of the kingdom is a gospel of healing. The gospel of the kingdom is a gospel of salvation. If there be anyone amongst us who is sick, this is the gospel of Jesus. We are not preaching our own gospel. We are preaching his gospel. And the same yesterday, today, and forever. So every sick you are pronounced healed. No matter the disease, no matter the plague, your health will be fully restored. If you believe God's word, let your amen confirm it. In the precious name of Jesus. Two things that everybody should seek for is wealth and health. Some have wealth, they don't have health. Some have health, they don't have wealth. That's why I took time to minister in the two areas. Because if you have, please know why your keyboard for goodness sake. If you have health and you don't have wealth, there will still be a problem. So the two must be in place. So the sick, you are pronounced healed. And don't be afraid. You refuse to be afraid. God is not a man. That should I. In the midst of hardship, if you notice, this is the time our members are testifying more. He said to me long ago, God does not, not to take him unawares. Before these things happened, he spoke to me, he said, stop speaking about politics. Stop talking about those problems. Focus on speaking over my people. And many heard it. It has not reached this stage when he spoke to me. And I stopped. Now he's showing. This is good morning. 
it will continue. But you will never be affected. No matter the hardship, it will not affect you. Because he saw it ahead and told me, my son, don't bother yourself about the things happening. Speak over my people. And you'd notice that this is the time people are testifying some incredible testimonies. No matter the hardship, if you believe God's word, it will never affect you. I'm speaking as a man sent by God, it will never affect you. This shall be your best season in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. This word will not return void. It was a complete point to which I've been sent in your direction. Amen. That you will never suffer what the world is suffering. Amen. Please don't think it's only Nigeria. The whole globe is going through hardship. The entire world. But you will never be affected. Amen. You'll never suffer any sickness. Amen. Lift up your voice and appropriate the scriptures to yourself in the name of Jesus. I will never be a victim of sickness. I will never suffer what the world is suffering. Appropriate it to yourself in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. In all the four services on Sunday, I will prophesy. Are you hearing me now? In the whole four services, set your heart. Bring your own souls. You will not regret. This shall be your best season. Amen. Father, speak to us. Bless every heart that receives your word. In Jesus' give me a big hand. You may be seated. The message for today is enjoying all round blessings. Enjoying all round. How many of you have started winning your souls? How many of you at least will win one? Just go back to the ones you have won. Every soul you won from Glory Rain is part of the souls for the year. Are you hearing me now? Make sure they establish and record them as your soul in day 52. Are you going to say now? For those who are new, each person was win 52 souls this year. So, the ones you want before, write them. Make sure they abide. They what? Abide. That is the most important thing. Enjoying all round blessings. This amount of kingdom advancement, then in bracket, obedience. In bracket, what? Obedience. Obedience is the master key to enjoying all around blessings. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. To observe and to do all his commandments, not some of his commandments. There are selective commandments where you pick scripture that suits you. And anyone that does not suit you, you say no. God said, we we'll do all, not some. Which I commanded this day that the Lord that God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. So if I do what he says, I will not be a local champion. Is that true? Somebody will leave local championship. He said, and all these blessings shall come on thee. If you go further, you see the blessings. If I do, if I obey, all the blessings in the word of God shall come upon me. May they come upon everyone. Amen. Obedience is the only thing God will ever require of us. When you ask God for a miracle, be ready for an instruction to obey. It is your obedience that will commit God to perform. Every time you say, God, I want something, 
and he's going to give you an instruction to obey. But let me say this to you. God will never force obedience on anyone. It is you that will choose to obey or disobey. Obedience may be temporarily painful, but permanently liberating. It may be costly, but the results are priceless. May obedience change your story forever. Amen. If you look at the man Abraham, for instance, he stepped into a transgenerational blessing through prompt obedience. Through what? Not just obedience, through what? Prompt obedience. It was prompt. And if you look at Abraham's life, everything God said to him, he obeyed promptly. In Genesis chapter 12, God said to him, 1 to 4, leave your father's house. I'll take the line and show you. The Bible said, and Abraham departed. Say prompt. Abraham, at the age of 75, at the age of what? God told him, he said, leave your people. Move to a land I will show you. Abraham would have said, Lord, you know I'm a matured man. At my age. The Bible said, and Abraham departed. He obeyed Instantly. In Genesis chapter 17, God set him at 90 to circumcise himself. To do what? And he said, 90? Circumcision is painful through. No, so just imagine at that age to cut off your skin. Abraham obeyed. Abraham did what? Obeyed. He didn't say, God, you know I'm 90, the pain will be too much. In Genesis 21, God said to him, send away Haggai. And our son Ishmael, he would have said, Lord, you know, you obeyed. In Genesis 22, he said, give me thy son, Isaac, whom thou lovest. And Abraham obeyed. Everything God said to Abraham, he did not say no. He obeyed all. And the Bible said in John chapter 8, verse 39, if you and I, Abraham's children, then we'll do the works of Abraham. Then answered and said, they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, then you will do the works of. That means if you are truly Abraham, you want to enjoy Abraham's blessings, then you must do like Abraham. Shout hallelujah. Look at Jesus in Philippians chapter 2. He said, let this man be in you from verse 5, which is also in Christ Jesus. And if you look at verse 6. But the verse 8 said, who being in the form of God, turned out trouble to be equal with God, but, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became what? Obedient unto death, even the Lord of the cross, even to the point of death, he was obedient. And then God had highly what? Exalted him. And given him a name which is above. You can't pass the test of obedience and not be enthroned. Our God has highly what? exalted him because of obedience. He did exalt him because he was the son of God. He exalted him because of obedience. May God enthrone you. Amen. May you be enthroned. Amen. That amen is your own. Amen. Obedience is the only proof that you truly trust God and his word. Every time you don't obey God, it means you don't trust the word of God. Because God is not a man so if I truly trust God, then I will obey his word. So I hear. If I struggle to obey God's word, then I don't trust him. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You are these people of God. You can't succeed ignoring God's instructions. Where I quoted is number 23, 19. Every old member knows that scripture. Because God is not a man. That's not a man I should repent. If God says something, then I should do it if I believe it. You understand? Hear me well. If you look at scriptures, everything about life has got him obedience. There are certain miracles you've got, and I didn't pray about them. You know why they came? Obedience. You don't need to pray for something you have obeyed. If I pay my tithe, do I need to pray for breakthrough? No. 
if you obey God's word, there are some prayer. The reason the prayer points are too many is because of lack of obedience. If I obey by loving my wife and she obey by submitting to me, do we need prayers? No. If I obey by being diligent in my business, do I need prayers? I'll succeed. Obedience. Say with obedience. Now, if you look at God's word, you know wisdom is by obedience. Wisdom is by what? He that yearned these things of mine and to wear them. Matthew 7, 24, 27. It's like not to what? A wise man. So if I have to be a wise person, what do I do? Obey. Success is by obedience. Is by what? This book of the Lord shall not what? Depart. Joshua 1 8. Then I shall make that way what? So that I shall have good success. Prosperity is by what? Obedience. If they obey and serve me, Job, the other one I read is Joshua 1 8 for success. For success. Prosperity will be this. Job 36 verse 11. If they obey and serve me, they shall what? Spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. If you be willing to obey, shall you the good of the land? Job 36 verse 11, Isaiah 1 verse 19. So if I want to prosper, what is it? Obedience. If I want to succeed, what is it? Obedience. If I want wisdom, what is it? Obedience. Do you know if I want marital bliss, is by what? Obedience. The whole of marriage to succeed is in four verses in the old Bible. Then you can't keep those four verses and not succeed in marriage. The entire marriage, husband and wife, is in only in four verses. Ephesians 5, 22 to 25. The summary of everybody is there. Once the husband does his own for a wife, it's a wife, submit to your what? Wife, submit to your own husbands. Submit to your husbands as unto the Lord. Even for the husband is head of the wife, even as Christ is what? Is the same way of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject to her, Christ, so let the wives be submitted to their own husbands. Is that what? And men do what? Husbands, love your, even as Christ loved the church and give himself. So the summary, this woman, do your part, man, love. Finish? There will be no crisis. There will be no what? There will be no crisis. The reason why there is so much divorce is lack of obedience. The crisis in the marriage is lack of obedience. If the man loves his wife, the woman submits her husband, there will be no crisis. Be, but no woman knows too much, she doesn't want to obey. The man knows too much, he doesn't want to obey. So the two argue. The problem these days is that we know more than God. Science and wonders is by what? Obedience. And Ezekiel 37, 1 to 10. He's a son of man. Prophesy. Do what? Whatever he said to you, what do you do? John 2, verse 5. They said they want wine. He said, put water. That was a sign. The first miracle. So anything you want as signs and wonder is by what? Obedience. John 2, verse 5. Supernatural manifestation is by what? Obedience. John 14, verse 21. He that had my commandments and keepeth them, is he that loveth me, and that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love you. I will manifest myself what? Unto you. Supernatural breakthroughs is by what? Obedience. John 5, 1 to 7. Peter obeyed, breakthrough. Supernatural promotion is by what? Obedience. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. Healing is by what? Obedience. Healing is by obedience. Do you know? Healing is by obedience. Proverbs 4, 20 22. Why promotion is to Deuteronomy 28, verse 1. So here. My son, attend what? My son, Proverbs 4, 20 22. That's for healing. My son, attend to my what? You, you, you want healing? He said, attend to my. Incline your ears to my. Let them not depart from their eyes. Keep them in the midst of their heart. For they are what? Life to those that find a health to their flesh. This, you have to obey this instruction if you want to heal it. If you want what? Just obey. Obey this one. He said to the man, do you want to be healed? Go and wash your eyes. He did not say, no, 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 no. I'm not going to wash. Protection is by obedience. Protection is by what? First Peter 3, 13. 
And who is it that will arm you if you be followers of that which is good? So here. Everything in life as a blessing is by what? Obedience. Take away obedience, nothing will work. Whatever it says to you, give it. Blessings will stop where obedience stops. The journey of obedience is a journey that ends all around blessings, that ends in all around. A journey of obedience is a journey that ends in all round blessings. I took time to look at scriptures. All the giants of faith were made by obedience. Obedience made the following persons. It, obedience made Abraham. What made, what made Abraham? Genesis 12, 1 to 4. Obedience made Isaac. Obedience made who? If you look at Isaac's life, he was to run to where? Egypt. And God said, don't go to Egypt. Stay here. Young people, please hear me. Young people all over the world, hear me. Because it's mostly for young people. Stop running without hearing. Don't carry your bags and run to a nation except you have heard God. The other side you think is green. It's not really green. When we are small, when we didn't know Mirage, you say, see water in front. As you're coming close, it's going forward. We didn't know that it was Mirage. We say, what? there's water in front. Oh. As you're coming, it's going forward. Before now, when you begin to grow, you now know that it's not water. Most of you think it's green on the other side. No. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want... He maketh me to lie in green pastures. Green pastures only when God is leading. Oh my God. You will not see green pasture because you travel. You see green pasture when God is your shepherd. Young people. Young people. Young people. Because if you're 70, you will not be thinking of green pasture. You're already old. So young people. I said, you want to go and die there. Well, no, I don't see a 70. Those of who are stupid, even at 70, they say, I want to go abroad. You see them when they, well, so when I see someone, I say, This old woman, no, go home. You see old people sweeping in a shopping mall. You just get angry. So, what is this mama doing here? So I, I can't go home. And they now want to wear trousers. <laughs> Be sweeping shopping mall at 70. Something you will never do in your, your own place. It's not green at there. Better ask those who are there. Did you hear me? Go and find out those who are there before you just carry your bag and enter. So here. Let me show you something. Some of you are young. Isaac wanted to run like his father. In Genesis 26, 1 to 14. Go and read. Isaac would have gone to Egypt. True? God said, stay with the Listeners, let me show you something in Isaiah 30 for those of you who always wanted to run. He said, Woe to the rebellious children, say the Lord, that take counsel but not of me, and that cover with a covering but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk to go down into where? And have not asked at my mouth. To strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. You know, my brother said, if I can come to America, things are going to get better. If I just appear in Alabama, things will be better. If, if we can just go to Manchester City, I know things will get better. <laughs> it's not football you're going to play. You better see somebody with the masters pushing somebody on, on the wheelchair. Has masters here and be pushing somebody, say the name of a uh, nursing. You left here to push somebody and be going to show. And when you see people they know, they will do as if they don't know you. Is that what you live here? God cannot send you somewhere and reduce you. 
the ones who heard and left for those places, you can see it in their lives. But please, please obey God by getting divine instruction. Don't just jump, carry your back, and enter road. They said they are rebellious children. They will not hear. They will not what? If I stayed in Lagos by this disobedience, by this time, I would have begged food. I, that you love somewhere does not mean that's your place. As a person, I never loved for that cause. Where I loved was Lagos. But that's not my place, so I have to obey. Obedience may be costly, but the results are what? Priceless. God told me, this is not your place. Go to Port Harcourt. I didn't like Port Harcourt. Never. I didn't want to. I never wanted Port Harcourt. I said, God of all places, he said, that is where you go. If you don't go, stay here. And as long as I was in Lagos, nothing was working. Everything shut down. You can't say God sent you somewhere and nothing is working. You sent yourself. Obey God. Forget your pride. Are you hearing me now? Forget your pride and obey God. You're already 60. Some of you are 65. You're still looking for a job at 65. Looking for a job. When you should be retiring, I'm mean, thinking of how to enjoy your harvest. I don't mean retire to stay at home, but that time you should be harvesting your, what you have sown. At 65, you are still saying, I'm trying to apply for a job. 65. When you should be at the peak of enjoyment, you are trying to apply. 65, you, are, you have missed it all. I told you I saw a Ghanaian. I was so touched. 70 something years. He said, I've been, I've been doing this job for 30 something years. I looked at him. As I said, he said what? I pity him. He didn't pity himself. <laughs> that is, you open hotel gate. That's all you do. Tell. I met a Nigerian, Igbo man. I will never forget in Atlanta. We stayed in a hotel. I went for a conference. And I said, I, I didn't hide it. I said, my friend, you are discussing our country. See, I discuss our country. You say, what I call it, masters here. Yeah, I say, masters, you'll be opening door for all these people to be passing and entering. Is that what you came here for? I've not even got you to this level. I was very angry. I was ashamed because I said, when I saw him, I said, you're Nigerian. He said, yes, I'm from the eastern part. I said, where are you from? I didn't hide that. I said, where are you from? I said, I'm a Nigerian too. Where are you from? He said, an Igbo man. I said, where? <laughs> I was very angry. All you do an open door, close door. That's what you left Nigeria to go to overseas to do. If you're doing a good job, no problem. You have masters, open door, closed door. Winter come, you now wear a jacket and be standing in front of you like this. <laughs> Something you never do in your own town. You now be pushing somebody on a wheelchair. You know, push and when they see you, because of shape, they will not greet you, even when you know them. They say, what hand are they? They just go there. <laughs> God did not send you there. Please leave pride and obey God. Go to where God has sent you. Young people, he said rebellious people. What did he say? Who will not hear this truth? Stop running to where God did. Don't allow present hardship make you take a wrong step. There are those he sent to, to those places and it's showing. It's what? It's showing. Everybody has a place. Everybody has a what? Find out your place and obey. Do what tell you that is a trust and you, you'll be trusting and obey. Shout hallelujah. Look at Moses in Exodus, Exodus chapter 3, 7, 10 to 12. This man, obedience made him. Is that true? Look at Elijah, the fourth example. First Kings 19, 10 to 19. Obedience did what? Made him. These are men who obedience made. Look at Peter. Luke 5, 1 to 7. Obedience made him. Look at Paul. Am I too fast? Abraham, Genesis 12, 1 to 4. Isaac, Genesis 26, 1 to 14. Moses, Exodus 7, 3, 7, 10 to 12. Elijah, 1 Kings 19, 10 to 19. Peter, Luke 5, 1 to 7. Paul, Galatians 1, 15 to 16. of them. What made them? Obedience. What made them? Obedience. Now, for instance, obey the commandment of soul winning and you will supernaturally be favored. Is that true? If you notice, I went for soul winning and I favored. 
Not simple obedience. We have said now God was so willing. Somebody is not obeying. Yet he or she wants to be favored. No. He said, when I sent you that post and script, like a what? Luke 22, 35. If you go for so many, you can't lack favor. John 4, 36. Take everybody who said they got favor. What did they do? They went for so many. Obedience is the cardinal principle that you need to trigger things to produce in your favor. Obedience. Say with obedience. It is the greatest force in the universe. Every miracle is rooted in our obedience. Shout hallelujah. Absolute obedience to God's word will put you in command. May you be in command. But let me say this to you. Our obedience or disobedience to any commandment of scripture is absolutely a matter of choice. It's a matter of what? Whether to obey or not to obey is a choice, it's a matter of choice. He said, I call heaven and earth, John 30, verse 19, to record this day against you that I have said before thee life and death, blessing and what? Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. We live in a generation where people want the blessings but don't want to obey his instructions that will provoke the blessings. This is a generation where people want what? But they don't want to obey the instructions that will bring about the blessings. They want God to bless them, but they don't want to obey. They don't want to what? Obey. This is a generation where nobody wants to obey, but we want the bless. What are you praying when you are not obeying simple instruction? Is that clear? Kenneth Hagin in his book tell of a story of a young girl who is so every day coming to pray. Every day coming to pray. So he said one day he was concerned and now called her. He said, Excuse me, I've been seeing you pray. What is the problem? He said, She's praying, you know, so that I'm, the young man she knows can propose to her and marry her. He said, no, you don't need prayer. What do you need to pray? This is your boyfriend. Bible has said, there's no righteousness with the righteousness. So there's no way you can marry. You would have told me, sister, I would have told you this prayer point is useless. He said, the prayer is useless because there's no, just obey by letting go the young man, let him go. See, there's no point praying this prayer because it doesn't make sense. God will not answer the prayers. He said, God will not answer. Delightsome, prompt, tireless obedience is the only way to sustain the blessing of God in our lives. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Partial obedience is what? Whatever it says to you and I, do it. You may not like it, but you have to what? Do it. I. I Somebody gave us land in one part of Port Harcourt, Nigeria. And that was where he said to me, no, this is not the place. Go towards the airport. I obeyed. I loved Lagos, but he said, go to where? I obeyed. If God gives me an instruction to that, I will obey. It may be costly. It may be painful. But that's where your, your success and lifting lies. Is that true? Whatever God says to you, Say nothing else. Say it one more time. Let me say this. You can be a prayer warrior and a fasting giant. If you walk in obedience, still will not work for you. You can be a prayer what? And a fasting. If you walk in disobedience, things will not work for you. If you walk W-A-L-K, in disobedience, things will not W-O-R-K for you. That your, fast, your prayer will not break scriptures. Your fasting will not what? Break scriptures. Write this down. Obedience is the only way out. Write it. The only way forward. And the only way upward. And the only way to the next level. Obedience is the only way out. Of that situation is the only way forward. It's by obedience you go forward. Obedience is the only way upward and the only way to the next level. So, whichever way, if somebody's what? To be out of that situation, obedience. To go forward, obedience. 
To go upward? Confidence. To get to the next level? Confidence. No excuse is acceptable for disobedience. No excuse is what? In 2 Corinthians 10 verse 6, it says, Having in readiness to revenge all disobedience, when your obedience is fulfilled. The day you obey, God will fight the battle. Are you getting me? Do your path and leave the other person's own. It says, when your obedience is what? So let your own path be fulfilled. It will avenge every disobedience. How many of us will obey? Simple instruction. Whatever it tells you to do, it may be painful. It may be what? Sometimes it's very painful, the things you want to obey, but you just have to obey. Because that's the word of God. It is in that, on that that God will give you all-round blessings. Do you need prayer for obedience? No. Do you need to pray to pay tithe? No. Just pay. That's why some things you don't pray for. God gives you a miracle. You know why? You obey it. Is that clear? Now, a man pay tithe, give quality offering. He will prosper through. You don't need to do like this. Okay, he didn't pay tithe. You are not giving offering, but you are praying to prosper. How will it look like? Huh? I think you prosper. You will prosper. Won't you prosper? You will not prosper. You will prosper. If you say you prosper, then you are, you, you, your brain, you left it at home. <laughs> so you, you prosper. Thank you. With all the things I'm teaching here, you say go prosper. <laughs> Who deceived you like that? You don't go prosper. You know, tight. You don't give offering. You say go prosper. You go take prayer, prosper. Thank you. Some of us. <laughs> so all the things you heard in this church, you didn't hear them. My friend, there you must obey. You must what? There's no way a husband and wife will have peace if they don't obey the love and submission. No, there will be no peace. Let them go for deliverance. Let them do 40 days, 50 days. Deliverance, it will not work. Simple obedience. Are you getting what I'm saying now? If we'll obey, prayer points will be... Simple obedience. And prompt obedience. Right on time. Now we say win what? So just obey. Just what? Leave the rest of the blessings to God. Just obey. And win your souls and watch. Someone said, no. 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 I don't believe in that. I believe in if you can pray. I pray. I'm going to pray 70 days prayers. All night to bombard. God will say, when you finish bombarding, come back. I have I've worked in disobedience and I know how costly it is. Are you going to say now? I know how costly disobedience is, so don't try it. It's very costly. God said, go to Panacot as I was staying in Lagos. <laughs> All prayers I prayed, not one was answered. I will pray like this because I won't answer you. I will not answer you. Is it Lagos I sent you? So that's why you are praying. Why you got is you are disobeying somewhere? So this is very costly. Very what? It's very costly. Just obey. Obey simple instruction. Pop. But these days we don't want to obey. We've been. I said something at the beginning. I said we now have selective scriptures. We have what? We read the Bible. Anything that tells you to obey is a no. He said, this part of the Bible, no. No. <laughs> he said, I will obey this part. The, yes, yes, I will obey this one. <laughs> Have you ever read the Bible and then something hit you like this? Bim. He said, no. <laughs> Say the truth. Have you read the Bible before? And then the dude is talking to you. He now do as if you did not see it. He said, for what I don't read here. He <laughs> said, so I will read this part of the Bible. I lie. Anytime you read that page, you just do like this. But, but you flip it or not, the Bible is there. Yeah. And your questions will be telling you this is the truth. This is the... Are you getting now? now? But the day you obey, you will enjoy the blessings of God. Rise to your feet. 
Second Corinthians 10, 6, that's where I quoted. Having readiness to have prevent what all will be, the way you'll be there is revealed. Shout hallelujah. We are going to pray for the spirit of obedience. Spirit of what? In, Ex in Ezekiel chapter 26, verse 27. It says, I put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my status and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Lord, let the spirit of obedience begin to walk in me. Whatever will make me rebel against your instruction, I cause it in the name of Jesus. I will walk in the obedience of the truth so that I can enjoy all around blessings. Are you ready? Sincerely pray in the name of Jesus. Let the spirit of obedience overwhelm me. Prompt obedience in the name of Jesus. For the spirit of obedience to overwhelm me, to envelop me. Open your mouth and pray for yourself sincerely. Every form of disobedience, I curse it in the name of Jesus. Say that. I curse every spirit of disobedience. And I walk in absolute obedience to your word and instructions. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. He said, even unto death, he was what? Obedient. Jesus. Even when death was staring, what did he do? 